Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at lights. Now, you're probably sitting there going, um, wait, what? So while aircraft have a ton of different lights on board, and uh, sometimes people struggle a little bit knowing what light is for what and when you need to use specific lights, uh, we're going to be taking a look at both the general aviation aircraft as well as a big old airliner, so you can kind of understand when you need to use what. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing turned on so that you can actually take advantage of uh, some of the different tech here and actually understand what we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to go and throw that up there, turn that one on a little bit, go ahead and crank this thing on. There we go. Again, I just want to get this thing rolling so that you can go ahead and have yeah, battery power so you can understand everything we're doing here. And we have low pressure. I'm not too, too worried about that. Give it just a little bit and we're good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our lights. So on a standard aircraft, you generally have a different collection of lights. You generally have internal as well as external lights. And a lot of times you'll have special controllers for different brightnesses of different lights. We'll take a look at that, especially with the airliner. First things first is you have your three, I like to call them kind of the GA lights. And that's going to be your beacon light, also known as your bacon light your navigation light, and your landing light. Pretty much every general aviation plane you're ever going to experience is going to have those three lights. The beacon light is your universal, let everybody know the aircraft is running light. As a matter of fact, you wanna turn this light on first, you wanna shut that light off first at the end. And the reason you wanna make sure that you do this successfully is on account of the fact that whenever your engine is running, this little flashy red light should always be going to let everybody know. When we first start up an aircraft, it's not uncommon actually to go ahead and actually leave this light on, turn the thing on, and then after the engine shuts off, shut it back off. This engine, this light will always, 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 always be on as long as the engine is running at any given point. All right, we're struggling a little bit here as far as getting this thing rolling, but that happens from time to time. There we go. Now we're in business. Cool. Okay. So next thing we want to look at is the navigation light. So the navigation light is a night light, is what I like to call it. So what the navigation lights on your aircraft are is this little tiny green light right there, this little tiny red light right here, as well as this little white light sitting here on the back. The navigation light is a nighttime light. It's going to be required whenever you start moving on the ground or you're in the air at a nighttime situation. It's going to let other aircraft know precisely where you are. As a matter of fact, you can see if I see just a red dot and a white light, I can tell that this aircraft is moving like this. If on the flip side, I see a green light and a white light, I know that the aircraft is moving like this. If I'm sitting in a situation like this and I can see a red and a green and no white, it means it's coming at me. If I were to look at it from behind, if I saw all three lights, that means I'm looking at the back of the aircraft. That is a wonderfully useful thing to have if you're in a situation where uh, you're flying at night and so people can identify you. So that is the navigation light. The other use of this navigation light, by the way, is a lot of time airliners will turn them on when they're using any sort of hydraulic pumps. Kind of a convenient little way to sort of let everybody know going, hey, I got a really high pressure thing going on. You might want to use caution, even though the engines are out. The next light is called the strobe light. This is a very, very common light that you'll see in a lot of different aircraft. What this light does, I'll go ahead and flick that one on. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Uh, you can barely see it. See this little white flash that you see every once in a while? That is a strobe light. What a strobe light does is it's basically an extra visibility assistance light. This is what I like to call a runway light. If you're in an aircraft that has a strobe light and it's a nighttime situation, you're required to use that as the moment you hit the runway for takeoff, the moment you hit the runway for landing. You don't want to leave your strobe light on when you're taxiing around on the ground because it's tremendously bright and it's really, really irritating. Generally, if you're doing GA during the day, this is literally the only light that you need. If you're doing any kind of night ops, generally you only need these two lights. This light is just an extra little bonus to help people see. By the way, if you're flying through really nasty clouds and really bad weather, the strobe light was not your friend because it will blind you. Okay, let's take a look at these lights now. Now again, every aircraft is slightly different, but they generally have the same set of lights. The floodlight is usually a little overhead light that you click on, usually it's this big thing here. And the moment you click that, it's like, oh, I can see now, because you can actually see we have this nice little panel lighting. That's a useful tool. In the real world, we don't ever use it, because if we need it, we're gonna blind ourselves with it. So you wanna be very cautious with it. The panel light usually turns on the indirect lighting inside of the panel that lights up little displays. You can see how all my GPS panel is really, really easy to see. If I shut the panel light back off, you can see actually more clearly over here that's going to give me my instrument lights finally we have these two lights we have the taxi light and we have the landing light the taxi light is a light that's only going to be required when you're taxiing at night again this is another one of those night lights a lot of people use the taxi light anyway all the time because it provides you a great way to let people know but remember this thing is pretty freaking bright too so you want to kind of keep that in the back of your head and last but not least we have the landing light for us in general aviation land we only need to use this again at night if we want to use this during the day, we want to flick this on the moment we get on the runway, and we want to flick it on when we're on final approach. Airliners have a slightly different set of rules with these kind of lights, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. 
All right, now we're in business. Let's take a look at what it looks like inside of an airliner. So inside of an airliner, you have a lot of knobs when it comes to controlling brightness. Uh, basically, you're gonna have the knobs for panels and you're gonna have knobs for exterior lights. Uh, whenever you have anything about any sort of display, that's gonna be usually referring to the individual screens that you have. In this case, if I wanted to make the inbound display, inboard rather, display a little darker, I could crank that. If I wanted to crank these, again, these are all pretty straightforward as far as that goes. You also have a master panel. If I turn this on, you're gonna turn on kind of the indirect light, crank that back down, it's gonna shut that bag off. Again, we don't have all this great stuff on a little Cessna, but I'm not complaining too, too much. Now, where it gets a little different is going to be up above our heads. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move my head down so you actually can see this pretty good. Now, you can see here that I have a good collection of lights very similar to the ones we had. We have our landing lights, and notice with this particular aircraft, we have outboard and inboard lights. Now, the outboard lights, of course, are going to be the ones on the wingtips. The inboards are going to be the ones that are going to be a little bit closer to their wing roots. Generally, depending on the type of airliner, you don't want to be putting your outboard, I should say, your um, the outboard lights down until you get a little bit closer to the runway. You can leave your two inboard lights on at all time because they're basically shielded for where they're positioned in the wings. Uh, remember, for airliners, we want to put these on as soon as we go onto the runway for takeoff. You want to flip them off at 10,000. When you're coming back the other way, flip them back on at 10,000. And of course, don't forget to flick on your outboard lights when you get within final approach, usually. We have another neat little set of lights on here. We have these things called runway turnoff lights. Let me go ahead and click everything off real quick. I don't know if we're going to be able to see them because they're probably going to be a little too bright. But you can see a runway turnoff light are these teeny little lights here that actually give us the ability to see exactly where the actual runway is. It's basically a right taxi light. Generally, when you're taxiing, you're going to be turning all three of these on together, so it makes it a little, little bit easier. If you're trying not to blind everybody, of course, you can leave these two off and leave just the taxi light on for the purposes of taxiing. Moving our way down, we have our beacon light. Of course, uh, you probably recognize this from general aviation land. Generally, you want to have this turned on again anytime you're about to start the engine, and don't shut it off until the engines are completely off. The same exact rule. This aircraft does a neat little twist, though, that has a lower beacon light, which you can just turn on the one underneath, or you can turn on the one on the top as well as the one on the bottom. Next light we have is our navigation lights. Again, same rule. Uh, the only difference here is uh, when you're in airliner land, generally you're going to want to leave your navigation lights anytime any hydraulic pump is running. So if you have like an electric hydraulic pump just kind of doing its normal thing, you generally want to leave this on just to kind of let people know. A lot of people will also leave this on when you have your APU running, again, as a general warning for ground crews around you. Strobe light is exactly the same um, for airliners. Generally, the strobe light gets turned on as soon as you hit the runway. And when you come back down and land, it's the, one of the first things you shut off with the landing lights when you come down to a landing. Now, we have a couple weird lights on here. And again, these lights are basically dedicated to uh, airliners. First is called a wing light. The other one is called a logo light. Now, the wing light and logo light are actually very, very similar. The logo light turns on a light on your tail. It is not required at any point, but a lot of people will turn it on at nighttime in order to make it a little bit easier in order to see what you're doing. So if I actually were to come here and I'll just reduce the time of day a little bit, you can see my little tiny logo light. It's not the world's strongest light. The other light that we have, of course, now that we did that, we can't see anything in here. Oh no, what do we do? I just turn on the dome light, you'll be fine. Actually, in this aircraft, you usually have a master light, but I don't actually see that here. Go ahead and turn on our circuit breakers, turn on the flight. You have this thing called storm. Clicking that switch is your best friend. Okay. So we also have the wing light. What the wing light is, is this little light here that allows us to look along the wing in order to check for ice. In some aircraft, you'll actually see this marked as an ice light. It's really the same exact thing. Of course, we have indicator lights. So if we were to light this thing up like a high mass here, dut, 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 dut. let's see what exactly what we've done. <laughs> Imagine looking into the face of that thing. That is uh, positively, absolutely blinding. So what I'm actually gonna do is I just wanna show you the difference of those two inboard lights real quick. Yeah. See so your taxiway turn off lights, how they basically shoot sideways. If you turn on the main taxi light, you get that one up in the front as well. So hopefully uh, that's helpful as far as uh, what you need the lights for and when you need to use them. Uh, again, in general aviation land, it's a little different. Uh, again, it's a little different for aviation, uh, airliner land, I should say. The big thing to remember is um, don't be turning things like strobe lights and landing lights on unless you're on a runway. And uh, the other thing you want to keep in mind too is you need enough light to be able to see where you're going. So if you're in a single player situation, you're having a real tough time seeing the runway, do whatever you need to do in order to see it. But just again, and like I said, if you're on a server or something like that, keep in mind the visibility of the lights on everyone else. Other than that, enjoy.